the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And when you find 1 Corinthians chapter 1, hold your finger there and turn one page back to the 16th chapter of Romans, the only the, the page before that. And in Romans 16, 1, you have that famous scripture about that lady, Phoebe. Look at chapter 16, 1. I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister. Look at this, which is a servant of the church. A servant of the church, which is in Sincrea. Now, flip the page back. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. That's exactly what Phoebe was, a servant of the church. No such thing as a deaconess. She was a servant. There's a difference. Um, 1 Corinthians 1 gives you a view of normally what God's people are. Normally. 1 Corinthians 1, 26. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many, there's a few, not many wise men after the flesh. Not many, some. Not many, mighty. Not many, some, noble, are called. Most of God's people are not famous, rich, intelligent, I mean highly educated. Most of them not. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. It aggravates a fire to people has got... 15 degrees that a man has never been to college knows more than he does. He can, God does that to confound him. That's what the Bible says. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Just like what you got through listening to here just now. Little kids. Put to shame. Some people have been to singing school for years. Look at here. Uh, look at verse 28. And base things of the world, and things which are despised. Look at that. Hath God chosen? Stuff the world thinks is, ugh, get that away from me. God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Now, I want to stop right there and remember verse 28. Remember Phoebe, the servant of the church. And um, don't make it different today. I'm going to tell you a little personal story and testimony. If you'll bear with me, um, I'll get a little bit sentimental uh, in my old age. Uh, I find myself being a little more sentimental now and then. And today, I'm going to tell you a story. And the story is about a dog. And a little dog that lived with us at our house, down below our house. My nephew, the dog's name is Marley, or was. She's dead now. And I'm going to preach a sermon, and the title of my sermon is Marley. Don't cry yet. I'll tell you when it's time to cry. Marley's life, I hope, will be an inspiration to many of you in their walk with the Lord. If there's ever been an illustration of this scripture, she was it. Uh, despised, not very, uh, I'll talk about that now this morning. Many of you who've been to my house, she's about 15 years old, I think, when she died, been with us 15 years. She wasn't actually my dog. Uh, my nephew lived down below me at the bottom of the hill, was actually Marley's owner. And I want to say a few things about Marley and hope that you'll pattern your Christian life after her life. Many of my girls know her. How many of y'all have been to my house and know who Marley was? Raise your hand. Okay, look at that. More than I thought. Look at that. First thing I want to say about her was she was of no special lineage or heritage at all. She was not a thoroughbred. The truth is, Nobody really knew what kind of dog Marley was. She was about this tall, black, gray, and white hairs all mixed together. Ugly, really, really ugly. And it just stuck out everywhere, unkempt. This hair is going out everywhere. 
the, the closest you could compare her would be a, a terrier, a little terrier mixed with hyena. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating at all. People would come, to, I had more people than five said, is that a hyena? You know, a hyena's an ugly animal. Just the way they're humped up like that. And they, they got no face and hair sticking up all over. And everything. That's exactly uh, the, way, the way she looked. And uh, can turn me down just a tad. Uh, she had no lineage. I mean, I've, honestly, I had people come to the house lots of times and said, what is that? No joke. I'm not lying. More than one, more than two. What is that? I said, it's a dog. She didn't really look like a dog. She was certainly not a show dog by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, nobody would admire her. Nobody would say, isn't that a pretty dog? No, no. She was just like Jesus was, despised and rejected of men. I don't know if you realize it or not because our minds have been been warped by all the pictures that come out of Hollywood and every picture they make, every movie they make that has Jesus in it, they always use a handsome man. That is not the Bible picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know the Bible said in Isaiah 53, he hath no form or comeliness that we, that we or no, it said he had no beauty that we should desire him. If you saw the face of the real Lord Jesus Christ, Nobody in here would say, boy, that is a good-looking man. He, he, would, he didn't look like a movie star. Uh, he, he looked like the average uh, Jew of that day. There's nothing appealing about him at all. He did not look, you know, he didn't, they didn't fit, put, you know, long hair and a mustache on Brad Pitt and say, That's, gee, that wasn't the way it was. Marley was that way. She had no beauty at all or comeliness of uh, at all about her at all. As a matter of fact, um, we're, we're living in a time when people got this idea that to be anything for God, you have to be successful, you have to have a lot of money, you have to have, make a certain income bracket. There are entire churches and entire movements today that center around 20 to 35 year olds that are all, you know where they're all jumping around the, the screen and everything? You never see, they're all pretty girls and they're all uh, uh, handsome young men and they're all just, everybody that goes to this church is just so, that is not Christianity. God chose the weak. God chose the foolish. God chose that was the despised. And Marley certainly fit into that. Uh, uh, I pray God today. I pray God today gives Shining Light Baptist Church some members and people that will start off this new year and say, you know what? I don't have to be famous. I don't have to be uh, known by the world. I don't have to have accolades packed on me uh, from the press. It doesn't, I don't have to be pretty. I don't have to be trendy. I don't have to uh, be a, a certain income to serve God. Uh, just an old uh, country boy, or country girl, or somebody that was raised, maybe didn't have a whole lot, maybe not appealing outwardly to the flesh. Th this world has gone celebrity crazy. Everybody wants to be a celebrity. Everybody wants to be a star. And most people even have their own little reality shows called Nosebook. And they are the star of their little own reality show on their phone. And they love being the star. They love putting pictures of themselves and people saying, oh, you look so good. And it's, it were, that mentality is, is, is got in church where they think, well, if you're not this, if you're not that, you're, you're just out. Uh, you know, to sing in a lot of churches, they have to, have to look a certain way. Did you know that Christian colleges send out groups to tour in the summer and go from church to church to drum up students and they send out a bunch of pretty girls and good looking guys? Now I get their point and there's nothing wrong with being, if they're nice looking, great, praise God. But listen, stick some ugly ones in there. I mean, let God get the glory, amen? Uh, you, don't have, you don't have to be, hey listen, God must love ugly, ugly people because they sure is a lot of us, right? Amen. And I'm, I'm telling you this morning, that's the way Marley was. Uh, she didn't have to be 
uh, good luck. Nothing, nothing. No, nobody come up and say, oh, that, has, that is a thoroughbred. Not a collie, not a German shepherd, not a poodle. No, sir, no, sir. To this day, nobody knows what her lineage or heritage was. She's just nothing, just a nobody in the dog world. Number two, she was absolutely maintenance free. Absolutely. You did not have to do nothing for this dog. Nothing. That's my kind of dog right there. Honest to goodness, you didn't. We, as far as I know, Marley lived, uh, she didn't live with us, but she lived, I mean, every day. She's right there playing with me, playing with the kids. She went running with me every single day. And uh, I, uh, as far as I know, we never spent one dime on her. She's 15 years old and died. Not a dime. You say, what's she? I don't know. I, I, if whatever we had, uh, we'd throw it out there and look in a few minutes, it'd be gone. You didn't even have to, she wouldn't even eat in front of you if you threw her some bone. We'd, we'd, we'd fix, uh, if me and Kelly once in a while in the summer, we'd we, uh, buy uh, them ribs. You know, you can buy a rack of ribs for $7.98 7 at the grocery store and put them on the grill a few minutes, come, they're delicious. And we'd throw them ribs out there and she'd just take them off out there and go around behind the house somewhere and eat them and be gone. Absol you didn't have to say, Say, well, she has to have this, and she has to. She didn't have to have nothing. We'd go off for a week on vacation, come back, she'd be right there. Don't don't leave no food. She'd go to the neighbor's house and the other neighbor's house and the other neighbor's house and the other neighbor's house and just make circles around. And maybe she fasted two or three days. I don't know, but I mean, she is absolutely no trouble at all. Never been to the doctor that, that I ever know of. I mean, if if she got hurt, she would. Uh, I remember, I remember a couple times she must have stepped on something or got hit or got in a fight or something. And, and, uh, and her, one of her hind legs was hurt really bad. And she ran around, I don't know if I can, she ran like this. She ran like this. If you put that on the book, I will shoot you. They say he was drunk up there staggering around in the pulpit. But she would run holding one leg up like that and just sort of hop on three legs, honest to goodness. There's been more times than 10, I'd go out the front door, I'd go out about 10 o'clock in the morning, and she'd come running across the yard, and she'd see me coming out that door, hopping, on, holding one leg up. I'd say, you ready to go, Mar? And we'd head down the road. She stayed right with me. She'd go in front of me, come back, go in front of me, come back. Never spent a dime. Never cost us nothing. Boy, I wish God would give us a church full of people that would say, hey, you don't have to pet me. You didn't have to pet her. If you did, she liked it, but you didn't have to. If you did, you didn't have to give her nothing. You didn't have to pay her no special attention. Are you getting where I'm coming from this morning? God give us some church members like that. Here in 2020, I wish the Lord would touch a bunch of hearts in here and say, listen, I'm going to be like Marley, Phoebe. I'm going to be a servant of the church. I'm going to be here, Brother Danny. I ain't going to cost you a thing. I'm not going to come in begging for money two out of three Sundays. I'm, if there are people that need help, we help them. I'm not being ugly. But, I mean, uh, some people don't show up when they're trying to mooch off the church or trying to get something from the church, and that ain't right. I, we don't, I don't mind helping people. We help people all the time to have today. But, listen, people, Marley, you, you didn't have to do nothing for her. I remember one time uh, uh, we'd go in the house. Marley had, uh, Marley had extreme manners. Extreme manners. Uh, I don't know how to say that except you know how when you open the door how some dogs do? You open the door some dogs blah, 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 hanging her tongue out and slobbering on you. No, she would never do that. She'd stand six foot back at the door and just look at you. If you would let me to come in, sir, I would be glad to. If you want me to stand here, sir, I'd be glad. She got, I got to work at understand her. I'd say, you're looking old, Marley. She said, I ain't the only one. I said, shut up. Because well, we run together for 10 years. And, and she would stand there. And if you'd let her in, she'd come in. But I never could stand a dog. You couldn't open the door. There they go. I'm getting there shaking, slinging water all over the house. You know how they shake like that? Uh, dogs don't put that on there either. So they're up there having a seizure and drunk and everything else. Uh, but you know how dogs just shake all over and, and, and they do like that and shake the, the water off of them? Uh, never, 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 nothing like that. Never, nothing like that. Uh, uh, she, you, so one time we let her in. 
And she got in somehow, and we was going off. I was going to preach a revival or going to, I was going to Florida, I believe, wasn't it, Kelly? And we was gone a week and locked Marley in the house. We didn't know she was in there and locked her in there. We was gone a week. When I come back, we come back, and I noticed the window right there, the, the blinds was all sort of bent. And I said, somebody's been in the house. She said, are you sure? I said, yeah, somebody's been in the house. Y'all might remember it. Remember I got up here one Sunday? I, saw, I, saw, I thought we had a raccoon. I got in the house. It was Marley. And we locked her in there, and I went in, and I could see where she'd been to all the windows trying to get out. And she'd clawed the, the blinds, the little mini blinds, and bent them and stuff. And I said, oh, my goodness. That time I didn't know who it was. And she got in the, in the bedroom, or the kids' bedroom, where Carrie's bedroom, the back bedroom back there, that was Carrie's. Then it was Chris's. And then uh, uh, she, uh, she got back in there and smelled, smelled dirt somehow. I don't know how, she, but clawed through the paneling with her, with her fingernails and got under the house and then and dug her way out from under and got out of there. That's a dog, brother. That's a dog. What would little poo-poo have done in a case like that? <laughs> the dog you spend more money on than you did your house. Listen. She is totally maintenance free. God give us some members like that. Lord have mercy. Wouldn't it be great to have a church full of people that say, hey preacher, I, I'll, I'll help and pay my own way. I'll take care of everything. Look, if you feed me all right, if you don't all right, I'm here anyway. By the grace of God, I'm saying, Lord God, to give us some members that'll say, preacher, I'm with this thing. I'm with, that's just the way she was. She was, number three, humble and respectful. She'd back off. When you come up the door, she'd back up like this right here. Like, how are you today, sir? Like that, like she was trying to say that. She didn't aggravate you to death. I, I used to have people that when I would pull up in Marion, I'd pull up in my parking place, and I would see them walking back and forth like that. And I said, oh, Lord. And you talk about messing up a preacher before he has to preach. Go jump on him about something or tell him bad news or something. You know, I believe the devil uses people like that. He'd just get my nerves all tore up to where I wasn't even in the right spirit to preach. And I'd, I'd walk, walked in there and he'd say, Brother Danny, I think you ought to. And I'd just go, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, please help me. Lord, please help me. And you got to be nice. You know, the Bible said we're given the hospitality. And, uh, and you have to be nice to people. And I said, oh, okay, okay. Uh, Okay, brother, okay, 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 okay. I want to say, well, you shut up and leave me alone. But I was trying to be nice and be like a preacher's supposed to. And I said, uh, 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 pr uh, brother, let's pray about it. Let's pray about it. this. Ain't the time to be making life-changing decisions and <laughs> spending a bunch of money and stuff like that. Uh, but that's sort of like the way she was, very humble, very respectful. She didn't aggravate you. Um, uh, you, you didn't, uh, she took what you give her and never asked for nothing else. Glad to get it and uh, was happy with it. Didn't fuss about it. Uh, you didn't throw it out there and say, hmm, I don't want that. Hmm, I don't want that. Go buy me some expensive food. Just whatever you threw out, you ate it. And uh, boy, I'm telling you, Lord have mercy, help God help us to get like that. God help us to say, Lord, whatever you give me. You know, like the old song says, where he leads, I will follow. What he feeds, I will swallow. Ain't you know, I change a little bit. Uh, but uh, you, you just sing them songs like that and say, God, whatever you've got for me in 2020, I'll take it. God, whatever you want me to do in 2020, I'll do it. Preacher, I'll, I'll back off. I'll, I'll, I'll let somebody else do something. I'll step up. I'll eat what you throw me out here. I'll come in when you want me to. I'll stay out when you don't want me to. That's what Phoebe was. She was a servant of the church. She, she didn't have to have first place. She didn't get mad if she wasn't called on. She didn't get upset if she didn't get to be in the spotlight. I mean, that's, that's the way Marley was. God give us some people like that right there. Amen. 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 Very respectful. I had a guy call me one time. He said, uh, this Shining Light Baptist Church? I said, it sure is. He said, I'm so-and-so from so-and-so, and I'm moving into the area, and I'm looking for a church that I can serve in. I said, well, brother, I found you a church. You come and talk to me. We talked. He said, I said, what do you want? He said, I'm looking for a church that I can serve in. 
I said, Lord, we need bus workers. We need bus drivers. We got stuff out here today. I said, we got tons of weeds. I was just, I was just testing the guy. I said, we got a whole bank of bushes and weeds over there that somebody needs to cut. And he felt led to never show his face again. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what he wanted. That boy wasn't looking for a place to serve. He was looking for a place to shine. He wanted me to put him on staff and put him in a position so he could get up here and shine. Now, I'm not up here because I'm trying to shine. I'm up here because this is God's place where he's put me. If a man has them kind of motives, I want to be in front of everybody. I want the spotlight. You, God ain't never going to use nobody with that kind of attitude. He said, well, don't you need an associate? I said, I need an associate pastor that got his heart in a bus ministry. I'll take one like that but just want to shine? No. I said, give me one that's got his heart in the bus ministry and visits and prays and fasts and backs up this thing? Yeah. He wasn't going to do that. He just wanted to shine. She was that way, that way. And then I want to say fourthly this morning, she was completely faithful all the way to death. You can count on her. Like a clock ticking. Sun, heat. Listen, we run in the snow. My driveway is just like that. And when it freezes, I have to go down it sort of easy. When it snows, I drive my forerunner down the, in the grass. Scares them to death. We take off down through the grass. And says, ah! But it's a whole lot safer than going down that driveway. Because it's concrete. I come off fire in a car one time years ago. And I hit ice, and it done, whoosh, turned right back up to going the other way, <laughs> all the way around, 360, right in the driveway. And so the driveway's slick, and I had to go down easy, and I said, well, I get right down here, Mark. And she's running around and 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 around. And around. And when I get down there where it's easy, I sort of run with my feet flat there to get off of that ice. And then I get to where they plowed it, you know, you can run normal. Didn't matter how cold it was. 18 degrees, she went running with me. 95? She went running with me. I think both of them is good for you. I think you're supposed to breathe cold air. You're supposed to breathe hot air. It's good for you. More oxygen to get in you. It's, it's healthy. And uh, I, I, I noticed that it didn't matter if it was raining. I put on a raincoat. She got wet. Just, I, I just un, unbelievably faithful. I mean, brother, if, if I went out there and said, where's Marley? She got locked up in the little house over at Mom's, right where Miss B lives now, and got locked herself in there somehow or another, two or three times, and we'd get her out a day later. If you push it open in real bad weather and go in there, and she couldn't get out. But if, you, if she was either gone or on a journey or, or something, because, listen, brother, when I walked out that door, she had this, un, I used to think, how does she know? How does she know? If I went out the back door, she was there. Just standing there. Honest to goodness, if I went up the front door, there she was again. I said, is there two of that thing? How do you know which door I'm coming out, Marley? It's weird. I'm, t I'm not lying, I'm not making this up. It was like, no matter where you look, there she was. I've had a few church members like that over the years. It's like they almost have a knack, a sense of knowing where you need them and when you need them and step up to help. It's just... That's a pastor's, a pastor's dream is to have people like that. You don't have to hunt for, Marley! <whistles> no. When I went out the door, she'd come running across, up the hill right there with me and just run around like the happiest person in the world. I didn't give her nothing. She's happy if you give her something. She's happy if you didn't give her something. Lord and mercy, people. What happened to that kind of Christianity? There, there are preachers who won't go somewhere and preach unless they're guaranteed a certain amount of money. That's ridiculous. That's ungodly. That, anybody ought to be ashamed of their sin. You don't charge for the gospel. You say, well, Brother Danny, hadn't you went a long way somewhere and didn't get much money? Sure, that's part of it. I didn't get put in jail and stocks and, like they did the Apostle Paul. You don't have to be paid for everything you do. You don't have to be recognized for everything. You don't have to pat you on the back. They don't have to put your name in the paper every time you give a testimony. I mean, say, hey, I'm just here to serve the church. I'm just here to do what I can. God, give us some people like that. 
No place she'd rather be than run down the road with me. Nowhere else she wanted to run off to. She could run off. She's never kept up, ever. I know you have to where you live, someplace. It's sad to have a dog cooped up all the time, really. But I like to see them run loose, run free. I mean, the son, you have to. I know if you got like them little dogs y'all, they raise and all, you can't just let them things out. So I'm going to eat them. For, <laughs> but so you live in a place where you have to keep your dog up. And I understand that. I'm not, I just feel sorry for them. Marley run, the, she run the woods. She run the, the trails. And as soon as I stepped out the door, there she was. You know why? She could run down Hoppy Tom and went somewhere else. Run to Marion. Run to Nebo. But she said, this is my house. That's my running buddy. I wasn't even her owner. My nephew was. He never, only time I'd ever worry about her, he'd get below about 10 degrees. I'd, I'd text my nephew and say, it's going to be 10 degrees tomorrow, all right? And he'd, he'd let her in the house come sleep on the couch or something. It was really, really cold. The rest of the time, she had a little place where she went up under the trailer and slept. Come back out. And I'd say, Marley, how you doing today? You talked to a dog, Brother Daniel? I sure did. I sure did. I know it's crazy. I wish we had people like that that'd say, hey. I had a man tell me that this week. He said, somebody said something to me about going to our church. He said, uh-uh, that's my church. Shining Light Baptist Church, that's my church. He said, my, you're my preacher. I ain't going nowhere. You ain't going to run me off. I ain't looking for something else. I'm not trying to go nowhere. This is my church. This is my church. This is my crowd. This is my family. I'm here for the long haul. God give us some members like that right there. That's what we need. That's what we need. You can't build a church off people that just like treat it like it's a revolving door. She was completely faithful. I not, not barked. I don't know if Marley could bark. Uh, she barked like you'd hear it at night, and I'd say, who's that barking? And Kelly said, I think that's Marley. Never barked around me. Never. Oh, what, when a dog barks, he's chasing something or mad at something or scared of something or something. She just didn't bark. And I'm telling you, she would fight any dog, any size. She was Fearless, absolutely. Uh, ask, ask Corey. Uh, ask, uh, she's absolutely scared of nothing. I would, I just cringe like that. We go run down by and snowball. Dog lives down the road about that high and solid white like that. About that big would come out. She chased it. She'd come after me. And as soon as Marley seen that dog coming across, she'd take off 90 miles. And I said, Marley, come back here. She'd go chase it and attack it. She was this tall. And just tear the end of that dog. Like, I mean, she had no fear whatsoever. She wasn't these people that said, well, I just don't know what's going to happen at the church. I just don't know if we're going to make it. We better not. Preacher, we better not do this. I'm, I'm just worried about No, sir, my Lord. If she seen the enemy coming, she didn't say, I don't feel led to go out today. She went and chased him down and attacked him. Now, she got bloody. She got hurt by, a lot for that. And I... I, I couldn't do nothing about it. I, I couldn't do nothing about it. I mean, to tell you, brother, she would fight an uh, animal five times bigger. She chased deer. Uh, if a deer come in the yard, a lot, we have a lot more deer now since she's gone. We have deer standing here. We have deer and turkeys and geese about that big all out in the yard about the same time the other day. And But, but, when, but if she'd have been there, they wouldn't have been there. She'd have chased every one of them ducks back where they come from. Uh, she'd have chased them uh, deer right back in the woods where they come from. Fight any dog, any size, not afraid, no, never retreat. Lord God, give us some church members here at Shining. I wish some of you would say, hey, I don't have to be in the spotlight. No, but I don't have to have a position. I'd just like to chase the devil out of here. I'd like to pray and see God do a great miracle in 2020. Preacher, I'm here if you need me. I'm, I'm sitting right here. God, give us some church members like Marley was. The only difference, the only reason I didn't make her a deacon, she is a woman dog and didn't have a soul. Phoebe, 
Dogs ain't got a soul. Dogs just go back to the ground. And uh, one day, I went running, and she didn't come, and we'd heard them fighting the night before. A bunch of old mean dogs come across a, a hill, and they got in a bloody, bloody fight. A bunch of them. And she didn't go running with me. And the next day, she didn't go. And I thought, I thought, she's probably just got her leg cut again or something. She's down there licking it, and she'll be all right in a day or two. She always was, 15 years. And she didn't come again, 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 again. A week went by. And I went down there, and I said, Mar something's happened to Marley. And he said, I don't know, I ain't seen her. And we looked and prayed and hollered and cried and whistled and everything else. Couldn't find her. And a few days later, he said, uh, she's on, she went up under the porch. She got in a fight that night real bad, and them dogs just tore all to pieces. She got under the porch and quietly went to dog heaven. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She died. No fancy funeral. Nothing in the paper. Nobody shed a tear. Including me. I mean, you know, after all, it's a dog thing. I said, I really hate that about Marla, man. I miss her. It touched my heart. She had a place in my heart. And it hurt. And I said, no funeral. No burial. She rotted right there under that porch. She couldn't get under there. You say, that's awful, Brother Danny. Do you know that's what thousands and thousands of God's people have done over the centuries until now? When they have a ten, fifteen thousand dollar funeral. Do you know for centuries the Bible said they were in caves, in rocks, in dens? You ever read Hebrews chapter eleven? They suffered and died in caves, and people just throwed rocks on them. Didn't have no burial. Didn't have no. We're living. We are this generation that we're living in. We think everything we need, God's supposed to give it to us and nothing bad's supposed to ever happen to us and we live great, happy, wonderful lives here and have anything we want and then we go to heaven forever and everybody celebrates us. That is not the Bible picture of a Christian. It's not. It's just not. I thank God for all this stuff. I mean, I hope, I hope somebody cries when I die. Sure, I'll pay you $10 now if you'll promise me. I have four or five and I have $50. Nobody, nobody shed a tear. She just quietly went up under the porch and said, it's over. It would be wonderful if me and every one of us here today would say, you know what? It really don't matter if I'm recognized. It don't matter if I'm... Some people get mad and they do something and you don't stand up here and brag on them. Really. I've had it happen over and over and over and over and over. And there's nothing wrong with telling somebody you appreciate them. But you shouldn't have to be bragged on down here for every little thing you do. That's what you're going to get in heaven, people. The Lord's going to reward us. Did you know what we need? We need some people that will just live right behind the scenes, at work, at school, and nobody knows it. Faithfully giving out tracts. Faithfully praying. Faithfully witnessing. I read a story one time about a lady by the name of Elizabeth Payson. She was very frail and sickly, always sick when she was young. You never heard of her, just like most people never heard of Marley. Her daddy was a famous preacher, a well-known preacher, George Prentice, a pastor of a Presbyterian church up in New York in 1845. She, she was 27 years old, and she married the pastor of a Presbyterian church. Her dad was a pastor also. The congregation loved her. She, she was sick and frail, but faithfully fulfilled her duties as a pastor's wife. And they loved her. An epidemic came and two of her kids died within two weeks of each other. Two kids, two kids. Within just a couple of weeks, she was absolutely devastated. What woman wouldn't be? The church tried to comfort her and she couldn't be comforted. They brought food to the house and she said, 
here's what she said, quote, empty hands, exhausted body, and an unutterable longing to be free from a world that has so many sharp experiences. She said, I can't wait to get out of this old world because it's so bad. You know what they do now? They call all their rich, big shot friends all over the country and pray God will raise those kids from the dead. That's what we've just seen here in the last couple of weeks. I'm sure you all heard about it of the big church in California. Can God raise the dead? Yes. Will God answer prayer? Yes. I'm not trying to be ugly. That woman said, hey, I lost two of my kids in two weeks. They didn't ask God to raise them. She didn't complain and get mad at God. Here's what she did. She wrote, more love to thee, O Christ, hear thou the prayer I make on bended knee. This is my earnest plea, more love, O Christ, to thee. Instead of getting mad and getting bitter and saying, well, if that's all I'm going to get, I'm, I'll just quit church. Okay? That's the way you treat your kids. She said, more love to thee, O Christ. This is my plea on bended knee, more love to thee. She said, God, you're in control. If my kids live or if they die, you're in control. If I'm sick or if I'm well, you're in control. God, if I'm up, you're in control. If I'm, if, you're, if I'm down, you're in control. If I starve, you're in control. If I'm full, you're in control. If I don't get nothing, you're in control. I love you. Help me love you more. God, give us some Christians like that. Brother, we can make a difference in this country in 2020. Lord, it don't matter if you ever bless me or nothing. I'll serve you because you're God because of who you are. That's the kind of Christians. And who knows? Who knows? Marley had no idea. Marley had no idea. She couldn't talk that she would be encouraging thousands of people that will hear this on the, on the internet to live for God. A little insignificant, ugly mutt with no training, no background, but she had one thing we need today, a grit inside that says, I ain't quitting no matter what, no matter how bad, no matter how big. I don't care if there's five of them jumps on me. I guarantee you one thing, brother. She went down fighting. I guarantee it. God help me to be like that this year. Let's stand by our heads in prayer. Heads bowed and eyes are closed.